everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. This is just a quick time-lapse tutorial for you. Uh, not going into too much detail, maybe just pointing out a few things about color and precision. So uh, we'll go ahead and get right into it. It's one of my favorite subject matters of all time. I love painting butterflies, so I hope you enjoy. So initially this was going to be a quicker painting, but I did do a very quick and light pencil sketch with a 4H graphite pencil. You can see the lines just very faintly in there. And I didn't spend a lot of time on that sketch. I just did enough to try and get it mostly accurate proportions, but I wasn't as careful as with some of my other drawings, again, because I was intending for this to be a quicker painting maybe 10 to 15 minutes, but then I got to the end of that first 10 minutes and felt that I really wanted to spend a bit more time on it and make it look a bit more accurate. So I did use a reference photo for this painting. It's from unsplash.com. It is linked in the description if you want to see the original image. So that was roughly 10 minutes right there, of course condensed down since this is time lapsed, but that was the first 10 minutes. I think total time I spent on this painting, not including the sketch, was about an hour, five minutes, something like that. And right now that dark color I'm using is the sepia, or some people say sepia I think, but it's a sepia watercolor and Windsor and Newton watercolors. Those are the ones I use from the tube into my metal palette that you see there on the right. So that just was a perfect color for those dark portions on the wings. And the orange I pre-mixed beforehand, it's a combination of cadmium red light and cadmium yellow medium, and it just made that perfect yellowy orange hue. So obviously, as you saw, I filled in the orange portions first as much as I could before laying the dark areas over the top of that. And the brushes I'm using are mostly, when I first was laying in the orange, I was using my size six round brush to fill in those fields of color a little quicker. And now, of course, I am using a more detailed brush of the size three round or round tip, whichever you prefer. I feel like round tip is an effective name for it because it really does come to a nice pointy tip. And what often happens with watercolor is you will lay in your initial color, especially on white paper, and it feels like it's quite dark. But then when you, as you work further along and you're looking at your reference image, you realize, oh, that paint could actually be darker. So that's what happened there. It, you saw, especially those top wings are a little darker because I added uh, layers over the top. A lot of what gets you a more realistic painting with watercolor is adding layers, building them up until you are at the correct value level. And just working as carefully as possible to fill in some of those details and areas I was trying to be as accurate as possible to the image but again since this was not a super long painting i mean about a little over an hour is is not a ton of time to spend on something if you want to get every single detail you could you could work for hours on end but this was just really wanting to get uh, a decent painting done a little longer than i've been able to do in some time while also Fin finishing it in a relatively quick amount of time. There are a couple spots particularly, excuse me, particularly on the bottom part of the top wings where I did add some burnt umber 
pretty sure that's gosh why do i get these so mixed up sometimes <laughs> i'm sorry i will think of it burnt umber is a regular brown I think it's burnt sienna burnt sienna thank you is the really orangey type color so that is what i used a little bit here and there for those deeper portions of orange and i must apologize you can see my hair dangling in the view a little bit i wound up to get a little bit more of a bird's eye view on the painting uh, I stood up and I hadn't had my hair tied back, so I'm sorry, you see the ends dangling a bit in the frame. Hopefully it's not too distracting. <laughs> For the antenna, I did use the pure black or ivory black as they call it in the Winsor Newton color palette. There's just a tip of yellowy orange at the tops of those antenna. That blue handled brush is my size one round tip brush, very fine detail. I'm using that to lift some of that dark color out because I realized there were a couple of light spots in the dark color that I'd forgotten to maintain. So I just lifted some of that paint out, went back over with some of the cadmium yellow medium. And the fun part, adding some splooshes and splashes of watercolor, drips and drops, and then going back in and darkening it even further just to get that vibrancy. And there's the final piece. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like button and consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless and I'll see you soon.